The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent out other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched end and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper time. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done and is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. So since Father Alex's microphone isn't working, I thought I'd just come up and preach. So what the heck? Just kidding. Just kidding. Well, you, you know, whenever I show up, it's either because uh, somebody is getting transferred or else uh, somebody's going to talk about money. So nobody's getting transferred. So we don't have to worry about that one. So um, today I want to talk about a couple of things. First of all, um, I want to just take a little bit to uh, talk about the state of the parish. It's kind of like the state of the union, but state of the parish. I like to do that at least um, uh, once a year, once every six months to let, let everybody know what's going on as far as finances and all that good stuff. I'm not going to go line by line and do a balance sheet report because um, everybody would just tune off real quickly. But I do want you to uh, at least understand um, how we're doing, what the situation is, and, it's, and also understand um, how that we are as workers in the vineyard, how that that, relate, how that, that relates to us. And in, in the second reading, we hear that, uh, that, that right at the very beginning when St. Paul says, have no anxiety at all. And this, um, you know, what a day, what a week, what a month, what a year for us to be told to have no anxiety. It's, uh, it has been an anxiety-ridden past six months. And so that's one of the things that we have to, we hear so often in the Gospels is that Jesus reminds us, have no fear, have no fear, uh, follow me, do not be anxious, do not worry. And that's very difficult, especially in times like this, and when people are worrying about where their next, uh, where their next meal is going to come from, uh, how, you know, where their, are, are their, are their kids going to be able to be in school? Are they going to be able to attend certain things? Are we going to be able to have trunk or treat, which we are, which is great, uh, but just all sorts of things. So I just wanted to make sure that you are aware of the, um, the financial situation of the parish and what we're, some of the things that we're working on. So I've got it written out, so I don't have to try and make anything up when it comes to, comes to numbers. So um, if you do anything, um, over, you know, if you think about anything over the past six months, uh, we have, it seems like things might have slowed down because we haven't been able to uh, do have as many group meetings in the church and or in the parish. That's that's understandable. That's because of of the of the um, of the, um, the the state of the, of the virus and the state of some of the things that we're dealing with um, relating to that. But there's been a lot going on behind the scenes. Uh, the folks in the office, uh, my brother priest and my brother deacons, have been working very hard to keep things moving, keep things developing, and preparing 
for what is going to happen, uh, what could ha possibly happen in the future. How will we um, address things um, uh, financially or how will we ad address things ministeri ministerially, liturgically, like what is Christmas going to look like, how are we going to figure that out, all sorts of th things like that. So we're constantly working on how to plan best for the future when things are so kind of unstable. So fiscally, um, despite COVID-19, we had a really remarkable year. Um, even though um, our general fund was, uh, was down only about 1.2% from last year, which is fantastic considering um, everything that we've gone through. And we were down 3% from last year's budget. So all things all things in hand, we did, we did very well. Uh, we had a net loss of $29,070, so almost $30,000. But thanks to your all's giving in the past and your support with our reserves, we were able to absorb that. Uh, we were also, during the first part of the year, we were able to complete uh, quite a few capital projects, like I said, in the first half of the year. But in December, we started delaying a few things uh, because we started to sense that things were starting to slow down a little bit. And then it's obviously as soon as this, um, the, co the COVID virus started to spread. We put all of anything, any of our um, other major projects or wish lists, uh, we kind of put those off to the side. As far as ministry highlights, um, the, um, we had 95 um, celebrate First Communion and, rec and receive the Sacrament of Confirmation. We've had to obviously stretch those out over the course of a few months, and we just uh, did our, our last confirmation last week. Um, St. Vincent de Paul, as you can imagine, has been uh, up and running and running fast with uh, providing lots of assistance uh, with for those in need by doing both home visits and prayer and other assistance. And thank you so much for your generosity uh, when we had our fifth uh, weekend collection uh, a few weeks ago, that was very uh, that was very impressive, and they were able to uh, to meet the needs of a lot of people. Uh, the youth have been very active. You can see they're they're doing their um, uh, shelter outside in their boxes uh, tonight. They were here they're here last night. And they'll be out there again tonight. So we've been able to do still have. Um, um, Lots of activities outside, and even before those were allowed, they were meeting uh, on Zoom, and we're staying very active, so we're very happy about that. Uh, a lot of our smaller groups, our prayer groups, they've been able to uh, to start meeting again, so I know that's that's been important to them. And also, our choir is expanded. We've added some some new members there. So the life of the church has has continued, and we are great, very grateful for your assistance, and we really couldn't do that without your assistance. Uh, it's when it comes to uh, the level of giving, it's gone down, but still it's very commensurate. Uh, we're, not, we're not in any, any dire straits. Uh, many of you have gone to, uh, to online giving, and that has in increased radically, so thank you very, very much for that. So for, that's pretty much for 2019. So for 2020 and 2021, um, we have reduced our overall um, expense and income budget by about $190,000. And we're able to do this because of the anticipated funds from the CARES Act uh, and also due to a reduction in maintenance and capital expenditures in the in administration and over in the rectory. One of the things that we're working on is um, bringing you more learning virtually through uh, a classroom set up for live broadcast, not just like this, but one uh, that will be, you know, built have a camera set up and a work board and everything where we can almost have a studio where we can um, do classes from there and also have another have also capability of having a rolling moving portable studio where we could do larger groups either in the church or over there in the parish hall and that's uh, that's um, being made of um, being made available by two funding sources, one from the diocese and also from um, a gift that was given uh, in the past for our, our for our audio and visual. So also we're updating our website uh, through a diocesan grant, and I think you'll be able to, uh, we'll, that'll be up soon. You'll really enjoy the improvements made there. One thing that we are working on that we did not anticipate, but I think it's going to be, have to, it's going to have to become top of mind, um, is the state of the art um, air filter system for that that would that um, includes and uses uh, ultraviolet light and also um, another another some other uh, things that I can't explain, but a purification system that we would put in in the ventilation system of both the church, uh, part of the parish hall, and then also in in, in the B building, and through a combination of I. Um, I um, 
ionization purification and, um, and a lighting purification, it kills uh, all sorts of germs and microbes and bacteria. Because uh, we want to you know, do everything we can to possibly uh, keep everybody safe. And that's going to be uh, an expensive project. We do get a TVA grant that's available for a portion of that, but uh, we would uh, going to have to ask for a little assistance from you all with that. And if anybody uh, would like to speak to me personally about that, I'll be happy to talk with you offline. Uh, and also tonight, um, as you know, we didn't have our Easter Sunday was not the way that it normally was, and that's also when we take up our seminarian collection, which which collects hundreds of thousands of uh, dollars for the education of our seminarians. It costs about $60,000 a year just to, add, just to put one, uh, one seminarian through, through, through one year of school. And that's expensive. And, we can't, and that's, all, that's all provided by from either you know, the guys um, who are um, in, when th those who are in college, they take out student loans, and, that's a, and then th those get repaid later on. Um, and then also for the, for the guys that are in, uh, in, in the upper levels of, of seminary, that's what, that's what the, um, that's what the uh, seminarian collection pays for. So we weren't able to have that collection um, this year, so we're, the, the, the seminarian collection is actually uh, this weekend. So you'll see, uh, and it's kind of sad just to see there's like two little baskets back there, and that's all there is. But, uh, we, uh, but feel please, uh, uh, I encourage you to give uh, to that seminarian account because if you're the only way you can get rid of the old guys like me is by educating new guys like that. So if you want to keep the water fresh, uh, we got to keep the seminarians coming through. So um, thank you for your patience on this. I know it wasn't, uh, it's not always the most exciting thing, but I know you do. Um, you do so much in participation in taking care of the parish and of each other and of the, the church here in East Tennessee. And I thank you for your participation and thank you for your prayers. And now that should be about halftime for the Kentucky game. So see you later. <laughs>